All right, hello. everybody. Hello, hello. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for tuning in, to everybody. I'm Lauren. We've got Gia here and Max as well. Um, we're joining from all different points of the world, I suppose. Um, yeah, let's go ahead. Uh, Gia, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit of, you know, where you're from, where you're calling from? Sure. Yeah, so, opinion? um, my real name is Alicia. <laughs> um, basically based in Melbourne, but I'm from Spain. I moved here five years ago already to Australia. And uh, I work at a studio called Raven Solo. And um, yeah, I do dark work mostly. Absolutely. Yeah, we have um, familiar with Raven's Hollow here from Empire Inks. We were familiar yeah. with Harrison. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And and Benny, you guys have a great group down there. Yeah, yeah, we do. Well, I'm Max. Um, I work down at Akara Arts in Milwaukee, but I started up at Empire Inks Studio. So Lauren and I know each other very well. But uh, yeah, I do dark stuff too. It's pretty, it's pretty <laughs> much as straightforward as it gets. Lots of black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lots of black. I can tell you that I've seen. Um, I can't even count the times I've seen you do color, if I, if at all. Yeah, it's on one hand. One hand, <laughs> one one finger too. Yeah. yeah, there's probably like three. I think three or four. We'll <laughs> yeah. see. It might break out of that soon. Try to do something a little different, but find out. Mm. Yeah. So, Gia, we're in a completely different environment and situation here. Um, we've been open yes. since, since April at the very yeah. end of April and it's not the yeah. same for you. So no, you it has a been crazy over here. Well, I think I've worked for less than three months <laughs> this year <laughs> and, uh, I took all this time to be perfectly honest, to just draw and try to move forward with my designs and, and the kind of work that I do, because there was nothing better to do to be fair. So I try to focus on larger scale pieces and like um, working with the body more than just doing like smaller um, artwork and stuff. Um, I, I try to change my style a little bit during this time. So yeah, that's why I've been posting a lot of drawings lately on my Instagram, if you take a look. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's nothing else to do. It has been so crazy over here. I can't wait to see the voice at the studio. I miss it so, 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 so much now. <laughs> yeah, so that is, what are they thinking about all this? Did you think you were gonna get back in sooner? Was it? So uh... we have a date now, which is the 19th of October, my birthday. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, nothing is for sure. So we have to wait and see. Uh, there's a lot of limitations anyways. Now they are talking about only allowing clients from a five kilometer radius, which is very hard. Oh, yeah. yeah, you would have to email everyone, ask them who lives in a five kilometers radius, who can I rebook? But this is not even sure. So it's it's a bit messy. We'll see how it goes. Probably I'll rebook everyone a week before. Yep, that's it. Yeah, but yeah, I'm, I'm really keen. I'm, I'm really, really keen to go back and just try to um, actually do everything uh, that I've been drawing and the kind of designs that I started um, doing um, during lockdown. Um, I, I'm actually really excited. I just want to go back to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how is that like? Is it just you? Is it a lot of drawing? Are you able to get together with anyone else at all or just uh, all virtual? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> so you can see your intimate partner. And I think now for singles, you can see, you can allocate like a, like a trust person or something that can visit you, but that's pretty much it. I've been for months just by myself. I live by myself and it has been a bit crazy. Yeah. Pushing <sighs> that, um, getting that creative imagination to flow is tough without yeah. something. During the know, first something. lockdown, most of the tattoo artists that I know uh, have been like really depressed and like not finding the right motivation to get going and draw um I think for the creatives it's tougher than a regular person let's say because you know we work for ourselves so there's no one really pushing us to create or like there's no reason to wake up in the mornings if you know what I'm saying yeah. um but this second lockdown has been much better for me at least and most of the guys that I know out there um people have been more productive now we have a date out so seems that things are going and just a reason to start drawing again thank god <laughs> yeah uh but yeah in general it has been hard very hard 
Absolutely. Yeah, hopefully that we can um, still continue to find that momentum and share it with you. Things are a little bit different here now. Things are beginning to possibly close again. So we'll see. Oh, um, what okay. about that? It's just word on the street, let's say. But uh, Max, what about you during quarantine? Because I know a lot has evolved in 2020 for you, which is yeah. awesome and positive. Yeah. But how did you find that creative momentum within yourself? Um. I think it was more just motivated by I don't have time usually to do this. <laughs> so getting to like work on stuff like that, I, it actually helped me a lot. Like stopping yeah. tattooing and starting to draw at least for two and a half months, I think. I can't imagine till now. Like that would be something else. So <laughs> yeah. I think that sucks. Like, but no, it was, it was good actually. I was just trying to get as much done as possible, but also take a break. Because I don't think that a lot of people that do our job stop. So yeah. I'm trying to like find that balance between like working and not working because I think it helps you kind of step away and see another perspective. So I don't know. I thought it was really helpful, but I don't want to downplay it. Obviously, it was really hard for a lot of people, mm. but I guess I was one of the lucky ones that it was beneficial for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. When you started getting appointments again, did you see that people were wanting, wanting more of the drawings you had been posting or how that, yeah. how was that transition it, like, back? It's been like, it's exploded. Like I'm busier now than I was before the lockdown. So I think people, especially in her case, probably are going to want to get tattooed more because at least that's been my, everyone I work around is like, yeah, I'm busier than like I've ever been. So it's interesting that that, but I'll, I did the book like three days before coming back. So I don't think we knew either. Didn't it come back? Like it was like a couple of days and they announced they were opening. Yeah. Oh. So yeah, it was, we don't have a very, we didn't have a lot of heads up. It was kind of like, we're coming back and Colt was like, all right, time for like a meeting. Cause <laughs> we, we were like, okay, I guess we're going back in three days. Like, so that was nutty. <laughs> but yeah it's been good I don't know it's hard I feel like I shouldn't be like thankful because obviously it's not a great thing for the world but if from like an artistic perspective it allowed me to step back a bit so it kind of springboarded yeah. me into where I am now yeah and it's it's interesting because our mindset was like well this is only temporary it's only going to be a couple yeah. weeks or it's only going to be six weeks but that um is such such an opposite case in Australia yeah, and especially in Melbourne, because actually I was living in Brisbane before, and over there yeah. they're having a normal life. They're tattooing full on, everything is back to normal, and I decided to move here <laughs> permanently, and it was a bad decision. <laughs> it was the worst time for that. <laughs> so I... Oh, that's, it's, it's funny how the world turns, huh? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> But yeah, let's let's talk a lot a little bit more of the juicy stuff, some of the design and some of the background information for both of you. Both of you I admire quite a bit for your dark arts and your Instagram shows us lots of fun stuff. But for you, Gia, it's all design. It's all design lately. And I, I love that. But yeah, let's talk about um how you kind of found your style and how you how you started with that. I know it's um evolved. So Look, when I started tattooing, obviously, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I did a little bit of everything. Um, everything was learning technique at the beginning. And then later on, I started doing all these cute, cutie patootie little things. Uh, <laughs> a lot of watercolor, a lot of colorful uh, pastels, uh, stuff like that. The problem is that I used to live in the Northern Territory in Australia. So tropical weather and lots of sun. Those tattoos didn't heal well. Like I would see them a couple of years later and, and they, they weren't just perfect. And the reason is, even if people tell you, oh, I don't spend time in the sun, that sun is nasty. Mm -hmm. It's really bad up there. So, and the humidity as well, tattoos take longer to heal over there. So eventually I started moving towards uh, darker style and it was all about healing, to be perfectly honest with you. I noticed that the blacks heal much nicer, using high contrast would be better. Um, and yeah, that's, that's, I, I think how I found this style also because I used to foster bats, fruit bats. Um, so that's how I started doing all these vampires and getting all this inspiration about little bats and, 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 <laughs> uh, Australian wildlife. Yeah. So I made a combination of them both and that's what I got. 
You know, that answers a lot of questions. For yeah, me personally, I followed your, your work for some time. And, yeah. and I was wondering that inspiration, it's pretty precise. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. They're very misunderstood animals, those bats. So um, I also found that, you know, I wanted to give them a little bit of that better image than what they have. Um, and yeah, that's, that's how it all started. <laughs> And would you, do you think your cat would like if you had another one for an inspirational little <laughs> creature at home? Yeah, actually, cats are always there. I have a lot of cat tattoos myself and I, I've done a lot of cats too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Cool. And then Max, I, I've seen you kind of just develop a, 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 a knack, a style for what you do. Is that what you envisioned going in? No, I kind of, I don't, I didn't have like a plan. <laughs> That makes sense. I mean, Colt gave me the the basics and kind of the realism background, I think, helped me with what I'm doing now because I'm trying to kind of lean toward adding some of those, like, correct light sources and all those different, like, artsy things into my stuff. But I had no idea what I was going to do. You probably know that I was trying to do lettering at the beginning and everyone made fun of me for that. And now they still make fun of me for that because I'm not doing anything even remotely close to that. But no, I got really heavily influenced by like Brazilian tattooers. So oh, I yeah. found one one day and I was like, oh, wow, this is amazing. Like, I'm going to do this. And so I just started like zooming in on people's tattoos to figure out how they were tattooing because like I could get some help at the studio, but it was a completely different style than what anyone does here so I was like all right I'm gonna run with this and now it's just snowballed and gotten away from me and yeah, I'm here <laughs> so I know there's no like clear path I kind of like stumbled into it I guess and people liked it and it worked so mm -hmm. it's interesting I don't know it's fun yeah I um that's why I actually asked you because I've, I've been around you so often obviously that not the last couple months but I was like you know I'd, I'd really like to talk to Gia and what do you think about her style and, and tell me more so it's yeah. it a really unique experience getting everyone together yeah it's super cool yeah Max um what did you uh when I first introduced you to her portfolio what are some of those things that you thought well I'd like to ask her about this or this um oh it was the in, I the biggest thing for me is like when people have like a clear inspiration which I think she already answered that question because <laughs> that's a cool like <laughs> it's very evident what subject matter she was into. And the, I obviously appreciate high contrast because it's jam the black in there and get a really high exposed like tattoo. But it's, that was, it was kind of the inspiration thing because I like cats and I also Somebody. like animals. So oh. that, that I noticed. Like, like, okay, sorry. Uh. That's a cool, like, it's very right. evident what subject matter she Here was into. a little bit of an echo. All right. I think we're good, guys. Yeah, yeah. we're good. So, now. yeah, definitely. Um, so there's also lots of other things that I found really cool, Gia, that you've been into with your Doc Martens. I thought that was just really cool. Can you tell <laughs> us how you got involved in that cause and the mental health aspect? Uh, I, I, I okay, so thank you. So um, I wanted to do so. I have been testing stuff, like not just drawings for designs and stuff like that. I wanted to do other things as well. Um, they're actually here. <laughs> I haven't sent them <laughs> let's yet. See, let's see. <laughs> yeah, so um, I started drawing these and originally I just was going to sell them. Uh, but then because of this situation in Victoria, I decided to that it's better to donate them um, to a good cause. And like I mentioned before, Beyond Blue is uh, an organization that uh, works with mental health issues and stuff. Uh, supporting Australians because at the very moment it's very hard to speak to a psychologist here. They're all flat out. Even though the government is supporting um, these kind of things, but um, right now psychologists are really, really, really busy. I, I even tried to get in contact with one myself just, just to talk about the situation and like how hard it is to stay motivated and stuff, uh, but I couldn't. So Beyond Blue is just, you can even call them and they just listen to you. It's a very nice organization. I think uh, it's completely free of charge and anybody can call. Uh, so I decided to make a donation instead of just keeping the profit of the boots. And it has been really well. Like actually I just raffled them um, the other day and, and yeah, just have to send them. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, I, I tried to do projects like this during lockdown as well. Something that is not tattoo related. There you go. 
Yeah, <laughs> here we are. I, I've been following that. And that's great. It just, it, it's, it's amazing that you came through a, a cause like that, that can actually help. And, yeah, and you're right. I usually, yeah, I usually donate to the bats, <laughs> to be honest, because they're always the, the forgotten ones here. But um, this time I decided to do something different. Nice. Taking a look. Can you see that on your screen as well? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Cool. And, and you know, it's that is motivating beyond doing something good and being part of something good, but finding a new yeah. medium because the mediums yeah. are not so accessible right now that maybe we want or. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's my <laughs> there she is. Is it a what, what's your cat's name? Let's hopefully she appears uh, again. The cat uh, Salem. Yeah. Of oh, Salem. <laughs> well, nice. Awesome. Yeah, seeing some of your designs. And I really like in some of your posts when you talk about the, the certain body types and, and making yeah. a design that, yeah. Can you yeah. tell me a little bit about that from your perspective? Okay, so something I decided to do while sitting here thinking what to do with my time is um, design things that I really want to do and nobody will ever ask for, which is large scale pieces and things that work with the body flow. Usually clients, in my experience, they usually know what they want. Oh, I want this. I want it here. That's it. But they rarely think of how to make it frame the body or even enhance the, the shape of their particular body, if that makes sense. So yeah, I started making these kind of designs, uh, which won't be, I don't want to give it to a particular client. I want to give them an idea and then adjust to their particular body and make a version of that design, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah, because, yeah, I think everybody is different. Uh, we're not completely symmetric. Uh, yeah, I, I, think, I think it's good to design per client. And these large scale pieces give you a lot of flow, makes you work with the body. Because I truly believe that a design might not be perfect, but if it's well-placed, it, it's so, so much better. Absolutely. Some of these are beautiful and, and, and unique, very, very unique as well. So, and that's, <laughs> and that's awesome because it's, it's coming from a place where you're the inspiration, which is great. Oh, well, thanks. There's heaps <laughs> of bats. Ab absolutely. <laughs> I'm always happy to draw the things, but to be perfectly honest, if I'm just sitting here drawing for myself, it's gonna it's gonna be a bad somewhere. <laughs> Absolutely. And and the response too is, is looking like it's pretty great. Are you um seeing yeah. that people are still interested in this and just asking lots of questions about when you'll be open yes. and I want that or I want that? Yes, actually, it has been incredible. Um, I moved to Melbourne uh, three months ago. I was living in Brisbane before, and um, I, I didn't have a massive clientele here just yet. I was a bit worried about that with the whole coronavirus. But since I started making this design, it has been ballistic, crazy. Um, yeah. But that, that's the thing. I think sometimes you just got to draw and show people what you can do and what you have in mind for them to be like, oh, yeah, actually, that works. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because I don't know about Max, but I, I used to draw, like, just wait for the client to give me an idea and just wait. Um, but now I decided to start changing that and draw for myself and just throw it out there and see um, who would like to have something like that. And it, it has been working so much better. Yeah, it's... Uh... See, I'm kind of in a stage now where like I got really lucky and like I think yeah. because what I'm doing is not common in specifically Wisconsin that these people mm -hmm. have sought me out. So I feel I'm really thankful that now I get people that are like, oh, I like this tattoo you did. Can you do something mm -hmm. that's like this? So like, but I was actually going to ask you if um, like, where does your like when you're starting to draw, like, where do you. Like, what do you start with? Because I sometimes have issues where it's like, okay, I want to make a tattoo design, but do you just start going and whatever happens, happens? Or where does yeah, that um, like, come from? I usually ask the client, or if there's not a client, I just take a picture from the internet or whatever of um, their body. So I start from yep. there. 
I usually work with symmetry, especially lately. Um, so I just draw a line in the middle and then I start with usually leaves and random stuff. Um, yep. And then there's always gonna be a bat that comes next. <laughs> um, and then, um, yeah, just filling in gaps. But I, I start with the body and that's symmetry. Am yeah. I making sense? So I start like yeah, no, with the, the florals sense. or whatever is random um, just to fill in the space. And then when I see a shape, is when I start defining. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That doesn't make a lot of sense because I feel like I'm in a different place right now where I want to like perfect the smaller pieces instead of working on like the large scale like torsos and backs and stuff. Yeah, I'm a little yeah. intimidated by that. I'm a little fresh in here still, so <laughs> I haven't gotten that far as far as like large scale designs, but. It's definitely like I'm inspired to see that stuff because it almost when I was looking through your stuff when Lauren sent it to me, I was like, ah, maybe I should try this. But <laughs> it's it's a lot for sure. Oh, give it a go. It's just larger stuff, you know, but yeah. you learn so much from one tattoo and you connect with a client because they have to keep coming back. Um, you know, you keep working on the same area. You can always go back. It's not a piece that is finished in one yeah. session. So you can always, oh, look, I'm going to add this, you know. Um, yeah. It's interesting. I think you should you should try one. <laughs> yeah, I'll give it a go here eventually. It's a, I don't know. It's just, I don't, I'm stuck between like, do I want to bite off more that I can chew or like take my time? Because at least when I started learning to tattoo, I was trying yeah. to take it like step at a time, like perfect this. Now we'll move to this. Now we'll move to this. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's the I'm right taking way, it like step by step. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's definitely a, a process to doing everything, but it it would be, of course, interesting, Max, if you found a client that you felt comfortable with, and yeah, maybe someone small. Take the like leap. We'll start there. <laughs> someone who's like under a certain height, and then we'll go. Oh you know? man, but if yeah, I was be... there, I would open my back. <laughs> I'm tiny. <laughs> <laughs> do you have yeah, uh, I don't plans know. We'll... hey go ahead. no go ahead Lauren do you ever have plans to come visit uh, the U.S. oh I was supposed to be there already <laughs> but yeah <laughs> then this happened so we'll see I get a lot of uh, messages from clients from U.S. and Europe as well um, but yeah at the moment who knows um, I really want to go I really really want to go of course. I mean, uh, we say the same about Australia. We, uh, with Empire Inks, we wanted to go to Rites of Passage this year, which is mm. an excellent show, a beautiful looking show. And we were excited. Yeah. And, and now it was yeah. just a big bummer on our part. Yeah, I know. But we'll get there, you know. <laughs> the expo will happen again. And yeah, things will go back to normal sooner or later. And the yeah. good thing is that the... I, I think that the group of tattooists in, in Melbourne and in Australia in general, there's not many of us. So uh, we're quite, kind of close together. Everybody knows each other. And there's a cool, cool atmosphere in those expos there. So, yeah, I can't wait. I, I can't wait to be back and see everyone. <laughs> Do they have any uh, expos announced yet? They're scattered in the U.S. But is it anything happening yeah. there? Not at the moment. So I think it's the last thing that it's going to go back to normal, to be perfectly yeah. honest with you. Because yeah. like I said, we can't we can barely leave the house at the moment. So yeah. <laughs> gatherings of a lot of people are not going to happen anytime soon. Um, I think at least the end of 2021. That's what I, I think. But obviously, yeah. I don't know yet. Yeah, there's literally just talk to rely on at this point. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I guess, um, you know, we're trying to be creative and how can we connect and how can we do this? And really, I guess our cameras and our phones are just yeah circling back constantly. Yeah. So. Oh, man, this is amazing, actually. It's, it's, <laughs> it's good that we have this and we can talk about tattoos. Yeah. Um, do you use uh, utilize any of these types of platforms to connect with your clients that like that face to face? Um, not really. Um. Not even with my co-workers, to be perfectly honest with you. We were like, yeah, we should do Zoom meetings and all that, but we have been gone for this entire time. <laughs> no, I actually thought about it, doing consultations like this. Um, but in general, and especially because now I'm doing larger pieces, I prefer to meet them in person and see uh, what I can work with. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, so, yeah, let's see... Uh... 
Max, do we have any other uh, remarks or anything you'd like to bring up while we're talking and here? Actually, I was going to ask her something. Um, so I talk to Jorge Lopez a lot, obviously, Jorge yeah. and our friends. But we've been talking a lot recently about how do you stay, like, I guess you're talking about motivated. But, uh, like, I personally right now feel like I'm in a bit of a rut. Like, when you hit that, like, I've been doing the same thing for a little bit. Like, I need to change yeah. it up. Like, how do you find, like, the inspiration to take, like, that next step? Like where it's like, I'm doing the same thing a lot now. And I, I don't know how to like knock it up a notch, I guess. Move, move forward. Okay. Well, look, this lockdown has helped a lot because I had all the time to actually sit down and think, all right, what are my strengths and what are my weak points? Right. And kind of work on those weak points. And also the strengths in a way, like show them more. Um, yeah, I think it's a matter of that. Just sit down and observe what you do and what you could do better. Am I making sense? Yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. Um, find inspiration from other artists, but also be careful with that because you don't want to take too much. You want to make things yours. Um, but yeah, basically that. Work on that and don't be afraid of, okay, this is my weakness, but I'm going to try to draw more of this. Suck. So why I suck at this and keep going. Yep. Yep. That's what I'm trying to do right now. Like I struggle you know with faces. I mean? yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. definitely I, like finding that like way of doing it. And it's hard. Like, do you look at other art as inspiration outside of tattooing? Yes. I try not to look at tattoos at all. That's why okay, sometimes that's... people tell me like, oh, this artist and I, I never know names and no offense yeah. to them, but it's just because I don't want to, I don't want much inspiration from tattoos. I want inspiration from other forms of art. Definitely. I think that that's probably what I need to do as far as like next step. Cause I do get stuck, like looking at these tattoos and being like, Oh, like compare yourself to them and like all this different yeah. stuff. And it's definitely probably the really unhealthy part of the tattooing social media side. Because yeah, you definitely absolutely. Get we sucked keep into looking. that. Yes. Um, look, I'm, I'm taking a look right now to your Instagram and you have things that are so like all the edges, all the, strong faces like I, I know what you mean about the faces but for example I used to freak out all the time because my faces look very soft you know very feminine yeah. very I've been trying to work on that masculine side let's yeah. say um, I've been doing more demons more creatures and stuff like that that yeah. are really hard for me <laughs> yeah definitely that's no I have that problem because I end up being too rigid like I yeah to, but like, I, I love up, that and that's it's hard. Like, it's hard to get like, cause that's why this style has pushed me because like you can do whatever you want, but it has to still be representative of the image. So like, it's hard for yeah. me to like break that. I think it probably comes from learning realism first yeah. because that's very regimented. Like this has to be like this, this has, yep. so it's maybe freehanding with marker would help too, like skipping the drawing process altogether. But yeah. it's, I don't know. It's definitely the struggle. Oh yeah, but I'm I'm looking at it and man, you have what I lack. <laughs> <laughs> but see, you have what I lack. So it's always interesting that like we're our own worst critics and like everyone will be like, oh, this is so good. And you're like, well, I found these like mistakes yeah. here and I can't look past that. But yeah, yeah, yeah I, I totally definitely get it. it's you gotta be careful for sure, not to be too hard on yourself, but I have an issue with that at times, definitely. Oh, uh, we all do. I think that's part of what makes you improve you know what I'm saying like if you're not critical yeah. and you think oh I'm great you don't evolve so it's, it's good in yeah a way. yeah I'm trying to embrace it just yeah. accept it as because it's also just frustrating that, when like I'm sure you are similar to this but you you try to make all these like little changes and stuff to your work and like you know the client doesn't notice but I'm sitting yeah. here staring over the way that this is like morphing and like, I need to perfect this. And like, no one notices except me. So a lot of times yeah. it's for me. Oh, I know. And I don't know if it happens to you, but sometimes I wake up at night and I get obsessed over one tiny little thing. Yep. <laughs> yep. It's I'm staring so at the photo after, and I find this little part that is the wrong value. And it's like half a centimeter long. And I'm like, oh, I screwed up the tattoo everyone's gonna see <laughs> and you did not it's just all in your head yeah yeah, i know yeah yeah it's One absurd of the few color pieces 
No, no that's, that's actually not... with uh, Garrett Bisbee. Oh, okay. He did. Yeah, uh, nice. He did the flowers on that. I work with him. Nice. Yeah. See, Max, you yeah, lucked get... out in your transition from you weren't closed right away like Gia when she moved. Yeah, I got lucky with that. We have some very strict guidelines where I work, but it oh, makes okay. me a lot more comfortable. It's very similar to Empire. Like there, it's a very similar situation. Milwaukee is a bit more got to clamp down a bit harder because obviously there's a lot of people here so yeah oh, no, of course but, yeah I love this one right here yeah have you noticed uh with your transition the types of clientele differences with what they're how they're finding you I know you're yeah into reddit which is really cool um yeah I'm big on advertising on reddit because I've gotten a ton of people that never would have found me otherwise that are like, I'm willing to travel and all this different stuff because as far, I guess you might know this from when I started, but I was tattooing a lot of like 18, 19 year olds when yeah. I started <laughs> tattooing 18, 19, 20 year olds. They're awesome. And I'm not going to talk bad about my clients, but they're good beginning clients. But when you get to this point, it's hard finding clients with the budget to take on the projects that you mm. need them to take on that we want them to do. So Reddit is good because I found that a lot of them are late twenties, early thirties and they, uh, oh, okay. yeah. they have the, the budget and like the life experience a lot of the time to like be more sure about what they want, where I've had people who are in their 18, 19 that want their hands tattooed. And like, it's just, oh, yeah, <laughs> it's been a good, it's, it's been a good transition focusing more on Instagram and Reddit versus Facebook. I think is a, yeah. is a beneficial thing for sure because those people on Instagram, like I'm sure she's getting hit up from the U S and Europe and all these different places. Those tend to be yeah. like very serious clients yeah. who are willing to sit and spend the money and be more open to you being more artistic and such. Yeah, absolutely. And now yeah. it seems that everyone is transitioning onto TikTok. <laughs> yeah. It's so crazy. I tried it for like two days and I'm not a fan. Same. I'm not into dancing. <laughs> I'd like to see you try Max. That's for sure. No, yeah, I'm dance. The most awkward. Like, <laughs> no. I just have that fear of like getting behind on something that everyone else jumps on. Yeah. You know? Like I, I guess it's probably a stupid thing, but like I don't I don't know. Like it, you don't want to fall behind in some area that like every, that other people are flourishing in. But I guess that's probably just that. I don't want to say like anxiety, but you know what I mean? That like nervousness yes. and stuff like that. Oh, absolutely. We all got very used to, for example, Instagram as a tattoo platform, yep. which is not created for that at all. And at any time, everything can move into the next one. We don't know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's very yeah, stressing. I agree. I agree. Yeah, what I do you guys like we... think? Oh, go ahead, Max. No, no, what are you saying? Okay, I was going to say, if you were asked, you know, imagine how you're going to market yourself in 10 years compared to how you market yourself now. Can you really see, like, even circling back to how we see ourselves now, do we really think that it's all worth it to put all of our heart and soul into Instagram or, you know, all of our heart and soul into Reddit or whatever it is, when that might not actually be what we're doing in the future, you know? yeah yeah um (laughs) yeah i think it we have to see how um things evolve there's not much we can do to be honest like Mm -hmm. now i'm working on my instagram quite hard but if the next thing is tiktok tiktok is whatever (laughs) (laughs) you know it's just adaptation and not being too scared of that just do your best yeah absolutely yeah i told even pinterest (laughs) Oh my god. Yeah. I know. Or even look at Facebook though. Like people who have stuck a lot of energy and time into Facebook and now it's slowly dropping off as like a main source yeah. of advertising for tattooing. Like I don't get many clients from Facebook. There's yeah. a few, but I'm seeing it now as being more of a thing for like my parents and like stuff like that. Like it is I don't yeah. have my Facebook because of my family. Like most people Same. that are younger are not about it whatsoever. Yeah. yeah. Actually, the uh, we spoke to Gabe earlier, you guys, Gabe Ripley actually said something that really stuck with me. And that was that, um, you know, we're focusing on a, a quick turnover. Social media is just quick. 
Whereas like if you're talking about a website or building content online that that stays there and there it is. So that, that really yeah. kind of made me wonder, well, just all the possibilities, you know, and putting designs online and kind of focusing oh, from your hub. Yeah, yeah. I used to be sucks. actually really ever... scared of, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. You go ahead with what you were saying. I was saying that I used to be very scared of posting my uh, drawings online because, you know, they end up on Pinterest or people copy them and stuff like that. But at the moment, I think that's that's what it is. That's the future. Um, freaking Instagram is now supporting, what is it, saves and shares, which means the more saves is the more people that want to use that as a reference. That can be tweaked or not. You don't know. So mm -hmm. I think, yeah, the more copied you get, the better for you, which is really sad. <laughs> absolutely yeah yeah That's yeah it's I, thought, terrible, I got but... copied for the first time by a guy like across the world and I was like excited that was like a moment for yeah. me like oh someone copied me like that's so cool you had to take it like that yeah yeah I yeah. was like this is so dope yeah even with your designs yeah there's it's a, a niche you know you'll know right away yeah yeah totally totally but it, it's fine I, I i don't mind That's... at this stage but um yeah yeah it's sad that that instagram is making it that way it seems so that the more copied you get the better for you <laughs> that's that's an interesting but definitely but yeah, yeah um so i think we're gonna get ready to wrap it up in a few more minutes uh you guys if that's cool with you yeah yeah, yeah. So um yeah let Dia Ooh, let's talk well. a little bit what we have yeah because you've been so you've got all these mediums and I consider them beautiful yes. to look at and I've I've watched this over the few months can you tell us how you decided to kind of go this route and get your own merch going and how the process through that well um I love clothes <laughs> if you know me yeah. a little bit you'll know that I yeah. love fashion and uh, yeah I I started just I had all the time to finally get into doing merch. Uh, okay. It has been a bit of a problem because Australia Post is not working properly. A lot of my merch is not arriving and stuff like that. So I'm finding different systems. Okay. Um, oh, terrible. But um, yeah, I don't know. Just black inspired stuff. A lot of black metal inspired stuff as well. Like <laughs> my masks. <laughs> um, because that's the kind of music I like. Um, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, still, there's a couple of softer designs like the Bat Hoodie that's right there. Um, that has been selling very, very well. It's simple. I don't like to make designs that are too complex. Um, I think people like them better, the simple ones. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it has been fun. It has been a fun project, but I think I'm going to step away from the merch for a little while. I'm working now on a print, a large scale print, and I think I'm going to put all my effort into that. Very cool. All right. Well, uh, Gabe, if you can hear us, we're going to go ahead and start wrapping up. Um, Max, Gia, I would love to talk again. We've got actually quite a bit to talk about. There's so many things we didn't touch on, just really the, the tip of the iceberg. Um, yeah. yeah. We will definitely have to do this again and um, yes, see you please. when you come here. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and Max, will, don't be sure. a stranger down in milwaukee oh i'll be back i'll actually be back in like two weeks oh perfect so i'll be up, back up there to hang out for a couple of days so it'll awesome. be cool yeah awesome um gia please stay in touch with us and um we will oh, hopefully well. talk again very soon uh, gabe awesome. if you're watching everybody oh, who's tuned in I'm here. oh awesome so, uh, yep. as soon as awesome. you're done with the thank yous let me know and i'll uh, i'll shut it off there was about uh 40 people 42 people that uh that okay. watched Awesome. And, Thank uh, you. We'll, we'll keep this up on the uh, on the YouTubes forever. Ooh, okay. Beautiful. All right, you guys. Well, thank <laughs>